Hey guys, I thought I would take you on a quick trip around the world today, real briefly, starting off in China and getting back to the United States. We have a couple big news items to cover, and the big the big news out of China today, or at least based on research out of China, is a potential for another flu pandemic. There is a brand new study out where researchers looked at a collection of evidence from 2011 to 2018, examining whether or not there was a potential new swine flu variant. And that's what they discovered. There is no reason for immediate alarm, although we have heard that before, haven't we? <laughs> you just should know that the data is based on research looking back over, over the last several years. Uh, it is something to be aware of and just an awareness overall that although we're in the middle of this pandemic related to the new coronavirus, this is something that we're looking at constantly around the world to see viruses that have potential spread. Interesting to note the first swine flu did not originate in China. At least not, that's not what we think. The first cases originated out of Mexico. And your current flu vaccine, uh, you know, there's different vaccines every year, does cover for an H1N1 um, swine flu uh, variation, but it wouldn't cover for this this new one. So researchers saying, heads up, this is something just to be aware of. From China, let's go to Afghanistan. There's a lot of news on several big media reports out of Afghanistan on national intelligence related to the United States. I wanna to get to that in a moment, but I wanna set the stage for you. Afghanistan, as you know, is the site of America's longest war. The Taliban controls more territory in Afghanistan now than any time they have in the past 18 plus years. The United States has entered into a tentative framework for a peace agreement that would lead to a withdrawal of a certain number of American troops eventually, if certain terms are met. That's a big question though, because one of the conditions would be that violence and attacks by the Taliban would decrease, and we're not seeing that in Afghanistan. So let's cue what happened over the weekend. Several media reports citing unnamed sources, anonymous sources in the intelligence community, saying that the White House was made aware that a part of the Russian military was sponsoring bounties for the lives of U.S. soldiers, pay, paying essentially Taliban-linked militants to attack U.S. soldiers. Now let's pause there for a second. The reason why I didn't rush into these reports on Monday morning is because they were based on anonymous sources. I wanted to wait for the White House to respond. The White House did respond yesterday, and here are really the two sides of the story. You have the reports coming from major media outlets citing these unnamed sources saying, look, the president knew about this, did make it public, hasn't addressed this at all, and this is important. Obviously, this is an adversary going after US soldiers and foreign land. That's what they're saying they have evidence of. The White House says something different, says this intelligence did not reach the president because it wasn't completely vetted. Uh, that's the line so far. And what they're also saying, the director of national intelligence, is that these sorts of reports in the media have hampered their ability to investigate this intel further. And so the two sides are really squaring off. I think what's important to know about this is you have one side, critics of the president, saying, look, the president's showing that he's close to Russia. He's not taking a hard line. Uh, you have the other side, supporters of the president, saying, look, here's another media report trying to link the president to Russia. Those are the political dynamics. I don't want us to lose the strategic dynamic of Afghanistan. The Taliban was harboring al-Qaeda terrorists that attacked the United States. That's the concern about Afghanistan returning to that, and that's why our policy there matters. So we can't lose sight of that. I'm gonna to continue to try to simplify this story for you so we can follow along as it develops. But that's what you should know today. Interesting, in Russia uh, this week, there's going to be an election that would allow uh, if this passes a constitutional, I don't know if I would call it reform, amendment, I don't, I don't know exactly what the appropriate word would be, but it would allow Vladimir Putin to stay in power till 2036. So something to watch out of Russia. All right, from Russia, let's go to Europe. Europe has listed a uh, number of countries that they are going to allow to travel into Europe. Uh, the United States is one, not one of them. <laughs> Part of the reason for this is that there it has to be reciprocal. So we've set up travel bans, and so we're not we're not dropping those. And so there's a, there's a, a, a dynamic in the list related to that. But we also know there's a huge outbreak of coronavirus right now in the United States, and so that's another reason China is actually on the list. If China drops his travel ban to Europe. 
uh, but it's just another example of the world trying to figure out the ways, the appropriate ways to open up. All right, back to the United States. Just want to flag something from you uh, for you from the CDC. I know there's a lot of conversation about going back to school. There was a new study, new research put out by the CDC yesterday. Small sample. I want to just make sure that that's clear. But it looked at a teacher that was in Europe that came back to the classroom in uh, late February, early March with symptoms, later tested positive for COVID-19. She was in a class, several classes, 16 classes of the course of several days. And so what scientists were able to do is get a sampling of the students in her classroom to see did they test positive for COVID-19. There was some interaction with students. There was some distant teaching. You know, she wasn't up in their face like this. And so researchers only looked at just a handful of students. It was like 18% of the sample size, so very small. Of those students, um, two of them showed some evidence of past infection of COVID-19. And of course, researchers say they want a bigger sample size to see uh, later did students develop antibodies from exposure to this teacher? They said that was one of the problems. Small sample size and testing for antibodies maybe too soon after potential infection. The, the, the big bottom line to this is researchers say that classroom spread of COVID-19 is possible. So this is just one kind of research document just to be aware of as we're all figuring out if the school year is going to start. I'm gonna to link to that study on our website so you can check it out. There's a lot of asterisks attached to it, but it's out there and I want you just to be to be aware of it. You could, you could look at it two ways. One, there was evidence of infection with some students, but the bulk of the students did not show infection and did not show symptoms. But one of the other little asterisks was asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic spread of COVID-19 is still a bit of a mystery. All right, be aware of that. Final thing today in history, Abraham Lincoln determined that the area of Yosemite Valley, Yosemite in general, um, should be protected in part of um, California for preservation. That was the beginning of Yosemite moving towards being a national park. What I thought was interesting about this is that this was during the Civil War. You know, we're so focused on those years, 18, the 1860s, uh, this was in 1864. So this was the beginning of preservation in Yosemite. And even at that time, the man who designed New York Central Park um, raised some concerns about Yosemite. He went out and surveyed Yosemite and said, you know, we have to be very careful of the crowds out here. Got to be careful what it could do to the land. If you want to visit Yosemite, you need a reservation because of COVID-19. Just FYI, if you're looking for a road trip. All right, guys, have a great day. Questions, comments, let me know. And as always, more on smarternews.com. Talk to you later.